Hey, hey, good evening, Matrix Mindset Academy. My name is Lisa Kennedy. Happy Thursday, and I am super excited to be doing an interview this week with Brandy Ward. Brandy has been a longtime friend of mine, and uh, we worked together several years ago. Hey, Carrera, how are you? I should have worn my glasses. Um, we worked together several years ago, and then we kind of lost touch for a few years, and we were reacquainted uh, a couple years ago. Brandy, I can see you, so I'm gonna try to invite you on. All right, it says it's adding. And um, I'm so happy that we uh, found each other again because it's been an absolute pleasure to kind of work with her again. Hi, Brandy, how are you? Hi. Hi. I was just saying, we worked together a long time ago, and then we kind of lost touch. And then we were reacquainted. I said a couple years. I think it was last year, maybe, right? It was, yes, it was last year. Yeah. And I was just saying how excited I am that we found each other because it's been an absolute I know. pleasure to reconnect with you and kind of work on some things together and uh, see, mom, can you not put the, my mom, my mom's doing the dishes. So she's making some noise back there. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure. Mom, if you're doing dishes, you can make all the noise you want. Brandy says, if you're doing dishes, you can make all the noise that you want, Mom. She said, thank you. She has two knives and she's done. Hugs. <laughs> hey, Patty. Hey, Derek. Hugs and kisses. So, yes, hugs and kisses from Brandy, Mom. <laughs> so, Brandy, I have been waiting since we set this initial date up for today because I've been so excited for you to share with our audience here um, kind of who you are your background, and then you know what we're going to get into. We're going to get into the material. But first, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your background. Um, my background is, the, I've been in the medical field for 30 plus years now. Um, Lisa and I worked for the same hospital. When I say worked, tomorrow's my last day. Um, you know, she left a job that was a six-figure income. And that was a, you know, a big... Um, a big leap for her um, with everything that's going on now with the economy and, and the way corporate America is, I was in a position where I was doing direct patient care. And actually I was one of those that wasn't making six figures despite being in the business for 30 years, uh, worked very hard, took care of patients. If we got a raise, it was a 2% and I needed a change. I've read these books uh, that we, we study in TIR and Matrix Mindset Academy, but I never studied them. And there's a big difference when you read something and say, uh-huh, yep, got it, versus study, listen, and make changes. I think I always gave off because I was a caring person, so I always give, give, give. But I guess I wasn't really open to receive, but I opened up and I'm receiving. So I'm so and excited. It's awesome, isn't tomorrow's it? my my um Yeah, tomorrow's my last day at work. I'll miss some people terribly, but I'm going to a great hospital in Maine. I have a little condo in Maine and that's gonna be my home and I'm just oh my goodness, I'm as happy as a as a clam. So Brandy, the story that you shared with me um, a week and a half or so ago, specifically around you changing positions and kind of how this came to be and, you know, how you had been looking. Can you share that story with the MMA community, just like you shared it with me? Because it was beautiful. Sure. Sure. I, I, um, I, was, I was looking for jobs. I was looking for something up in Maine. I... I interview very well. You should know that, Lisa, you interviewed me. <laughs> she was my boss yes. before. Yes. <laughs> and, and I really, um, you know, I always got the jobs, but never got the money offers. They, they put me way down, <laughs> and like way down in money. And I just, I really, really needed the peace in my life to go up to Maine and be in my place because that's where I really, it's where I belong. You know, I go over that Piscataqua River Bridge and I see Maine the way life should be. And I'm like, yeah. and, you know, when I when I did this with before and did the reading and not the studying, 
I was always, you know, just saying, oh, I should do that and putting out. But when I opened to receive and I opened my heart, you know, not everybody um, has an open heart. They might have a big heart and a generous heart, but they don't open it up for themselves. And, um, you know, it was a huge, huge difference uh, when I finally opened up my heart for myself. And, you know, you can go and you can you can talk to a psychiatrist about the crap in your head and they're going to write you a prescription. You can go talk to a psychologist about <laughs> the crap in your head and they're going to want to bring up every can of worms in your past and just go over it. And, you know, how does that make you feel? And screw that. I know how it makes me feel. I'm not opening those can of worms anymore. <laughs> but when I worked with the TIR and I, I worked with Lisa and I worked with, with Brian, it was different. Brian is a is a architect. He's a builder. He's an engineer. So he can tear things apart without tearing you apart. He can rebuild you and help you teach you know, teach you how to rebuild yourself and design the life that you want. And that's the difference. So I said, wow, this is really great. Someone I can relate to. And when you really think about it, I mean, Brian Del Masso has some pretty dynamic women in his life. I mean, he's got Jenny Lynn. She's mm -hmm. um, blows your mind amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, a, I'm also studying her book, Magnetic Love, which is... Some parts of it, I have to say, are hard for me to read because that's where I need to grow. Sure. Um, and then, but it's not like, oh my God, I'm going to, you know, it's not like that, but you just go through it and you say, ooh, that, that hits a spot. And then you work on it and she's right there to work on it, right? You just follow a few more words down and a few more sentences and, and she's got you. Um, so he's got her, his daughter is amazing. Maddie Rose and you know he also has you and his business Lisa and it's just it's just incredible you know the 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 women that are around this man and how he empowers how he really empowers us and I'm so glad to be a part of it because he's you know he's my Yoda <laughs> so I love that. you know you have lots of mentors <laughs> but he's yeah. kind of he's that you know so and that's such a difference and yeah. he doesn't lead with ego yeah. He could. He's not bad looking to look at. You know, you, you kind of deal with it. <laughs> he's okay, but... <laughs> right? Yeah, he's all right. He's just yeah, he's not listening, I don't hot. think. So, <laughs> but, you know, he could lead with ego, and he, he absolutely does not. And, boy, that just, what, a, what an eye-opening experience I've had with this. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell them, tell, tell the people what happens with these job interviews. Like, how did this, how did this go down? Like, how is it that you're changing jobs and tomorrow's your last day where you are? Like, how did that happen? I, I honestly, it's because I was, I was open. I went to, I, I went to York Hospital's um, website. An hour later, I got a phone call. It was actually within an hour saying, oh, can you come up for an interview? And so I was like, wow, that was fast. <laughs> and then <laughs> I got the interview. She was amazing. I, I miss loving my boss. Mm -hmm. I loved you dearly, Lisa. You know Aww. that, and I still do. Love you, bye. And, you know, I haven't had a boss that I love, and I really want, <laughs> I want a boss that I love. I think that's important. Okay. And that's one of the things I put on my board. By the yeah. way, the vision board, total, total, <laughs> let me tell you. That was a total craft um, thing as far as I was concerned. It was just a cute little craft project. Boy, did I realize it's not. So <laughs> I said, okay, fine, I'll do this little craft project. <laughs> and I hate when people do those, you know, quotes in the air. But it yeah. was a little craft project. And it was like everything I put, well, not everything, but a lot of things that I put there for my job was definitely there. I met this girl, Becky, who's going to be my new boss. She is amazing. She's also a complete rock star, just like you were, Lisa, and still are. But now, you know, this woman's going to be my boss. I got the job offer like a few days later, and it was like, this is what you're offering me for Maine? And then I go to the um, employee health uh, exam, and the girl there, she's like, <laughs> she said, yeah, we have a gym. Well, one of the things on my board was that I could find a gym that I could afford up there. <laughs> well, they turns out they have a gym for 
their employees and it's a beautiful gym, she says. So of course me not wanting to take responsibility for working out and losing weight. I said, oh yeah, but do you have classes? And she's like, yes, we do. I'm like, okay, <laughs> can't we'll get away with that one. I said, yeah, but do you have yoga? She said, yeah, I think we do. And we have like health and fitness people there for you too. So if you don't see me thin the next time you see me, thinner than I am, then I am just, <laughs> it's my fault. You will do it. I totally so, have faith in you. Yeah. Totally have faith in you. Oh my goodness. So now I have no excuse, but get up and go. Yeah. So it, like all these things that I wanted for that, it's there. It's happening. Yeah, you're manifesting. My neighbors are taking me out to dinner tomorrow night when I get home because they're thrilled to have me there. Yeah. You know, and the good mornings and hi and how are you? Mm -hmm. I'm just, oh, I'm so, the blessings from God, from the universe and, and that, that I got from hooking up with you again. Because, you know, when you, when you really think about it, if you don't introduce this to somebody, you know, what would have happened if you didn't reach out mm. to me? Just got the goosebumps again. What would yeah. have happened if you didn't do the ask? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'd be where I am. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank for, you for asking. Thank you for being open. And I'm, I'm happy that you shared that because I think that's such an important takeaway for people. You know, we have a lot of people in the MMA community that are in network marketing. We have people who are in our affiliate program. And, you know, you'll hear Brian oftentimes talk about the power of asking, right? And it's so true. Don't make it about yourself, right? Make it about the person on the other end. And I mean, Brandy is, look at her. What would have happened if we didn't ask her if she was open? You know, I believe she would have manifested these things into her life eventually, but I believe that we helped her do that a lot. Uh, you know what? I, you know? I don't. No, listen, I'm, I'm, what am I, 56 years old now? And I've been working on this for years, working on this as in reading, working on this as in wanting, working on this as, you know, putting it out what I want. But I don't think so, because I wasn't open, Lisa. Yeah. Well, I can appreciate you giving now. me the credit for saying that, yeah. but I, it, it, you know, the proof was in the pudding. It, it didn't happen before. It's gelling now, but well, I, you, I, I, and I don't mean to old, interrupt you, but I have to agree chip. with you. I, it wasn't happening. Yeah. You look amazing. I would have never guessed you were 56 and 56 is like nothing, but you look amazing. Well, you're such a, you get to gauge it down your fills up those wrinkles. Oh, you're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> I love you. Tell me, tell me and tell the people, tell the people, what was your biggest breakthrough with the TIR content? Like if you had to narrow it down to maybe one lesson, what do you think your biggest takeaway from the TIR program has been? Well, it's still something that I'm working on and that's terror barriers. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, work in progress. Um, yeah. But also the... Um, the part about, you know, op open the flow and, um, you know, allow to come in to you so you can accept. Mm -hmm. And also you have to see, you have to take, an, before you start anything, you have to take a look at your life and say, hey, how's that working for you? Stop! And, you know, that's why. Stop. Hi, Jay. Sorry. <laughs> and so that's why I was, I was, um, I was, I, I disagreed with you when you said I probably would have got there. No, I wouldn't have. Because I took a look at my life and saw how was it working for me. And with everything I knew, guess what? It still wasn't working for me. But now it's working for me. So that's what you really have to see. Where are you? How's it working for you? As much as you know everything, eh, you really, you don't know everything. And um, yeah. And you might know it, but you just might not apply it. So this helps you even to do that. Yeah, it, it's so all about that, that's it's really all about the action. The big things. Yeah, I know. This what's the one you know, thing? There's three. Yeah, that's okay. You look at what you think you know. Right? It's like forget what you know and start taking a look at your results. Right? Because that's exactly. another thing Brian talks about. Like we know, no, 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 no. But if we don't do anything, if we don't take action on it, what we know is really irrelevant, right? So that's perfect. And then my last question for you would be if someone is on the fence, they're in our Matrix Mindset Academy, they've been working with us, they're loving the content, they hear us talk about the Thinking into Results program, 
they're kind of on the fence. Maybe they feel like they can't afford it. Maybe they feel like, I don't know, they wonder if it's the time for them. What would be your advice to someone who's on the fence about taking that next step and becoming a client of the, of the TIR program? The fence hurts. It's not comfortable to sit on, so get off of it. <laughs> Number one. Number two, um, again, here's, here's more, more than one thing. Um, if you invest all the stuff and all the stuff instead of the real good stuff that you need for yourself, you'll never find happiness um, mm -hmm. in, in that crap that just takes room in your life. So just decide what you're going to spend your money on. And then another thing is you know, your time, you're not going to get it back. How many times do you say, oh, if I, were, if I could go back, I would do this differently. If I could go back, I would do that differently. Well, maybe I would have done them differently if I did this sooner. Mm -hmm. So knock it off with the time. I've had breast cancer. I don't know how much time I'm going to have left. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make the best of what I've got because it's been... You know what you need to do? This is one thing I suggest you do. I suggest that you write your eulogy or your obituary. And really write it honestly. When somebody else write it, writes it, you know, my father's obituary. Oh, he was a wonderful gardener. He was, you know, he loved his garden. He, everything we said was all, you know, roses and yummy and delicious. And wasn't that great? He was a total booze bag. He was a jerk. You know, we didn't write that. So write your own. I wrote my own. And when I wrote my own, it was like, yeah, you know, life hasn't been that great. I'm not married. I don't have children. I never mattered in my, my parents' life. How could I possibly matter in anybody else's? And my marriage didn't last because I didn't matter there. So, you know, maybe if I wrote it a long time ago, I would have done things differently. So write, write your obituary and see how, exactly how great your life is. And a lot of people will write great things. They had a great marriage, have a great marriage, great husband, great kids. But a lot of people won't. And a lot of people will say, I wish I did. You know, on your obituary, she always wanted to open a flower shop. He always wanted to you know, be a really great husband to his wife, but he just couldn't communicate. You know, write it out what your obituary is. And let me tell you, you'll be not only <laughs> paying for TIR, you'll probably double the money and say, hey, thanks for this. You know, it's like it's like central air. When you put it in, you think, oh, my God, how much did that cost? And then on that one hot summer day when you're cool, you want to send the guy another check. It's the same way. You know, it's it's yeah. this is make up your mind and get off the fence. And, the fence maybe, doesn't, is not comfortable. Maybe writing your obituary, as you say, right? Maybe that's part of what Brian talked about this week where he was talking about what is your purpose and how do you define it? You know, you, you sit down, he instructs clients to sit down and start, you know, take some time, do it on a Sunday morning, have a cup of coffee and just start writing. What are your personal wants? Write all the things that you want. Right. And forget money. Write across the top of the paper, write, I already have $100 million. And then just write. And then sure. you do the same thing for your professional wants. You know, maybe that is in addition to, maybe that's the first step. And, and then, you know, sitting down and thinking about what it is that you really want. And then I agree, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're someone who's stuck in any area of your life, and let's face it, we're all stuck somewhere, TIR, it sure. Is a magic yep. place to turn to for sure. So, um, are there any, Brandy, you're amazing. I am so completely grateful to have you in my life. I am in too. this community on this journey. There are so many people who relate to you. There are so many, you, you're just such a shining example of so many wonderful things in life. And I believe, I wish I could see your vision board because I, I have some certain things for, for you that I hope you have on there because there's so many people and I know you don't, you know, you're not necessarily looking for this, but your story is so powerful. There's so many people out there who need to hear from you. So thank you for sharing with us. We love you. Are there any final words that you have or anything else that you'd say or advice or anything that you want to tell the community before we part ways? Find your peeps. You got to find your peeps. Yeah. 
you know, it's it's not necessarily the DNA. It's not necessarily the people you know right now. You know, if people, if your circle isn't isn't supporting you, then they're not your people. And this is something that, I mean, there are people that I, I, I only met through Zoom meetings, yet I know they've got my back, you know, and, I, and, and I've got theirs. So, you know, if you need your tribe and you need your peeps also, jump in. It's great. Yeah. Get off great. the fence. <laughs> Absolutely. You're <laughs> awesome. I love you. I hope that you have a fantastic night. Can't wait to hear all about your dinner tomorrow night. And I'm sure that we will talk soon. Yes. Thank you so much for helping. Thanks on. so much, love Lisa. Lo love you a lot. Mwah. Take care. Bye-bye. You too.